All right, so today I have the pleasure of reviewing the SE Electronics 2200. I've been hearing a lot about this mic for a while now and I've finally able to test and review it, but as always, full disclosure, SE Electronics did send me this mic for free to review, but that never sways my review in any way, shape, or form. They don't get to see this video before I post it. These are all my own thoughts, my own opinions. They don't tell me what to say. None of that good stuff. So. Let's get into it. Now let's cover some specs for this microphone. It's an XLR condenser microphone. It has a cardioid polar pattern and its frequency response is 20 Hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. All right, now let's do a plosive test with the SE Electronics 2200. Now, as you guys know, I don't like pop filters. However, it did come with this metal pop filter and metal pop filters tend to be more transparent than regular pop filters. So I'm actually not so mad at this. So let's give it a go. Peter Piper popped his peas resulting in plosives. Mm. Peter Piper popped his peas resulting in plosives. Now let's test the proximity effect of the SE Electronics 2200. All right, now I'm around eight feet ish away from the SE Electronics 2200. All right, now I'm around six feet away from the SE Electronics 2200. All right, and now I'm just a couple feet away from the SE Electronics 2200. All right, and now I'm about six inches away from the SE Electronics 2200. All right, and now I'm right up on the SE Electronics 2200. I'm really curious to see how the bass response sounded on this microphone the closer I got to it. Let's see. All right, I'm not even sure why I do this, but now this is the SE Electronics 2200 microphone boomed out of frame, much like you would do with a shotgun microphone. This microphone was not designed to capture audio like this. You will not get ideal results doing it this way. You will hear way more of the room sound. Uh, you will hear less of your voice, but this is what it sounds like boomed overhead, much like you would do with a shotgun microphone. All right, as always, so sorry about the microphone handling noise, but let's test the polar pattern of this microphone. All right, I'm speaking into the front of the SE Electronics microphone and slowly spinning it off to the side. So now I'm off to the side of the SE Electronics 2200 microphone. My thumb got stuck. Uh, and now I'm gonna go to the back of the SE Electronics microphone. And then now I will arrive to the other side of the SE Electronics microphone and make my way back to the front of the SE Electronics 2200 microphone and that plane. All right, and this is what the SE Electronics 2200 sounds like in an untreated space. Obviously, this isn't ideal. You would never want to record in an untreated space like this, but just to give you an idea of how that sounds on this microphone, this is what that sounds like. And by the way, I've also noticed in my videos, because I'm on this wide angle, it makes it look like I'm further away from the mic than I really am. I'm not. If I were to be right up on the microphone like this, and then I'm just a little bit further back like this, but it just makes it look like I'm further away from the mic than I really am. Just wanted to clear that up in case anybody was wondering, but this is what the SE Electronics 2200 sounds like in an untreated space. Let's move up to a treated space and see how that sounds. All right, and this is what the SE Electronics 2200 microphone sounds like in an acoustically treated environment. I have many, many different acoustic methods in here to make this space sound as dead as it does. And this is what this microphone sounds like in a treated space like this. All right, and as always, a little bit of camera audio to cleanse your palate. Let me know in the comments below if you can tell which microphone is the Rode NT1 and which microphone is the SE Electronics 2200. All right, so this is the Rode NT1 versus the SE Electronics 2200 microphone. In this blind A-B test, I do have the Rode NT1 fifth gen. It is the signature series, and the only difference really is the signature series is just an XLR. 
Rode NT150 Gen. It doesn't have the USB input. And um, like I said, I have the SE Electronics 2200 here comparing them between the two. Now, a little hint here. What I found is the SE Electronics has a little bit more top end, a little more airiness or a little more brightness to the audio, if you will. So if as we go back and forth between these microphones, if you do hear a little bit more brightness in the audio, that's probably a hint that it is the SE Electronics 2200. So now with that little tip let me know in the comments below if that helped you decide which microphone is which and now of course i will reveal which microphone was which as i was speaking all right, so this is the Rode NT1 versus the SE Electronics 2200 microphone. In this blind A-B test, I do have the Rode NT1 5th Gen. It is the Signature Series, and the only difference really is the Signature Series is just an XLR Rode NT1 5th Gen. It doesn't have the USB input. And um, like I said, I have the SE Electronics 2200 here comparing them between the two. Now, a little hint here, what I found is the SE Electronics has a little bit more top end, a little more airiness or a little more brightness to the audio if you will. So if as we go back and forth between these microphones, if you do hear a little bit more brightness in the audio, that's probably a hint that it is the SE Electronics 2200. So now with that little tip, let me know in the comments below if that helped you decide which microphone is which. Now, who is this microphone for? Well, I definitely recommend this microphone for both content creators and voice actors. It's a bit on the brighter side, as you could hear from the test, but not so much that it's painful. Um, I think it really does have a great sound to it, in my opinion. And also, in my opinion, it's a steal at only $250. So, yeah. Not much else to say. It's a great sounding mic at a great price point, and it's more than enough for, like I said, content creators or voice actors. Now, as far as my overall thoughts, um, what I found between these two mics was that the 2200 was a bit brighter than the NT1. So for those of you out there that want a little bit more sizzle, if you will, the 2200 will give you that. But in my opinion, it'll give you that without the audio getting too bright or too harsh sounding. Some microphones have too much sizzle to them, so they're just too bright. And don't get me wrong, microphones like that have their place and time, but for recording voiceover for long form content, it's definitely not the flavor that I would choose for reasons that I've covered many, many times on this channel. But like I said, the good news is with the 2200 is the fact that it will give you a bit more of that bright sizzle sound without it being too harsh or too overbearing. It's a really nice balance in my opinion. All right. And as for the SD Electronics 2200, well, you know what they say.